it's a very normal part of life to communicate with other people, to try and reach some form of mutual compromise, to try and reach some form of understanding of each other, to care about each other's day and ask how their day has been, to form an agreement over finances or over how you're going to be spending your time. And when it comes to people who care about other people, you can strike up that two-way conversation, find that middle ground. Arguments happen. I prefer to call them debates when it's two people who genuinely care for each other. They can form a debate and try and work through difficult times. They might not particularly like each other or get on with each other at times, but they still have the empathy to care about each other. So when it comes to a narcissist, we believe that they have the empathy to care about us as we care about them. So even asking them a simple question when they walk through the door of how has your day been? If something's happened to criticise that particular narcissist at work on that particular day, they're going to take offence to you just asking them how their day was. If you haven't taken the bin out for them and they couldn't quite get their car on the drive or haven't pulled the bin back up and they couldn't get the car on the drive, they're not going to think, oh, maybe they've been busy. I'll just hop out of my car, move the bin and pull the car in. They're going to come in and cause an almighty argument over something on the grand scheme of things. It doesn't need a massive argument about you might have misplaced something like your bank card or your car keys and if a narcissist has misplaced theirs you'll probably start going through things with them like can you remember the last time you had them which is quite an annoying question anyway because with all of us if we could remember the last place we had them they wouldn't be lost they however you however would be willing to then help the person look for whatever they have lost because you have the empathy to care about the person and you want the person to have the best day not the worst day with a narcissist if, if you've lost something and you ask them or explain to them that you've lost it it's a case of well what do you want me to do about it i'm busy i've got to do this it's not my problem you go and deal with it because they think it's beneath of them they might even start calling you names there's, there's, there's two ways of dealing with it. There's the people who will shame you, blame you and criticise you for making a genuine mistake or a genuine error in judgment or just being busy. And there's those that will try and work with you, try and help you. Yes, we can all have those moments where we might have something else going on with our own lives that perhaps we don't respond in the best way that we should have at that time. However, we can reflect on our behaviour, we can see where we went wrong, we can apologise to the person and try our best not to do it again. A narcissist doesn't do this, they don't see the problem within their own behaviour, they just shift the blame. So this video is going to be about what happens when you ask a narcissist a question. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support. If you are new to the channel, my name is Elizabeth Shaw and this channel is all about the Narcissist Personality Disorder. To give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact, and different methods to find what works for you to help you overcome narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. What we have to recognise when we're dealing with a narcissist, the best way to deal with them is to no longer deal with them. They're not looking for compromise. They're not looking for understanding. They're looking to get you going. They most often believe they are right. And if then, even if they know they are wrong, they want to watch you go crazy trying to prove you are right to them. You do not have to keep explaining yourself to those who are unable or unwilling to understand your explanations. You don't have to keep trying to compromise with those 
you are only ever going to offer that false compromise to let you down time and time again. They are showing you who they are as a person and we have to learn it's time to step away from that kind of person so that we can surround ourselves with people who are more like who we are as a person, who are willing to communicate, who are willing to compromise, who are willing to understand each other, who are willing to agree to disagree. When it comes to a narcissist, one of the characteristics is they are very arrogant people. So if they see something as beneath them, they're not going to be willing to talk about it or find an understanding about it. If it's for um, a reason about finances, you need to discuss finances with them. If you are with a narcissist that isn't interested in finances, they're just interested in spending all the money and letting you deal with the consequences, they believe that dealing with the financial side of things is beneath them. So if you go to try and communicate with them about this, they are going to somehow twist it and turn it around onto how it's your fault, or they might even play the victim card and say, oh, I knew it would be my fault. Say that you're, you haven't got enough money for groceries that week. The narcissist will turn it around. Oh, I knew you'd blame me for it. So they're going to play the victim card to gain your sympathy so that you stop questioning them so that there's no consequences to their actions. And they never learn from their behavior because they don't recognize their behavior. A narcissist believes they are special, they believe they are superior, they perceive themselves to be flawless, they don't agree with the fact that they make mistakes, to them any mistakes they've made is your fault. So if you question them and it questions their belief, they feel threatened in some way, they are going to turn on the defensive to it's a power struggle with a narcissist. They need to be seen as perfect and they need to pull other people down to feel better about themselves. So if you question them about something that questions their own belief that they are superior or questions the fact that they've made a mistake, they're not going to be willing to admit that mistake because to them, you will have made them do it. Nothing they do is ever their fault. A narcissist is grandiose, so they are preoccupied with self, meaning they will tell countless lies to suit themselves. A narcissist has that sense of entitlement, so they are very happy, they are more than happy to take, but very reluctant to give, unless by giving they get to take something back. Due to their sense of entitlement, they will rarely to never admit fault. They will always look for a scapegoat to blame. With their sense of entitlement, a narcissist genuinely doesn't believe that certain rules that don't suit them, they don't believe those rules apply to them. However, they do believe those rules apply to you. So if a narcissist feels abandonment, they might have multiple sources of supply lined up so that they can jump from one to the next to get their needs met. They don't have the morals, they don't have the respect to care about the people they hurt. They believe that the other person didn't give them the admiration they believe they're entitled to. So the other person deserved that treatment. However, if someone wants to cheat on a narcissist, they take this as deep criticism. You're not allowed to do things like that. It is that self-entitled hypocrite, one rule for them and another rule for you. Rule one to a narcissist, they are always right. Rule two, if they are wrong, rule one applies. A narcissist has a lack in empathy, so they are oblivious to how their behaviour affects your feelings. And if you bring up how their behaviour has affected your feelings, they are going to take offence to this and they are going to blame you in some way for why ever they acted 
in the ways they acted or they are going to deny acting in the way they acted or they're going to distract you by getting you to focus on your emotions, focus on your feelings, blame you for being too sensitive, blame, blame you for being jealous, blame you for being argumentative, even though they provoked the situation in the first place. If they feel threatened in some way, if they feel exposure in some way, they are going to do all they can to take you down, to get you to react in some way so that they can play the victim, so that they can escape any form of consequences for their behaviour. And with their own lack of empathy, they get highly frustrated when people don't understand where they're coming from. And people don't understand where they're coming from because people are often being gaslighted out of their own reality and out of their own sanity. So it's a very confusing place to be. It's very difficult to understand what a narcissist is doing when you're not aware of what they are doing. It's very easy afterwards to say, oh, I saw that red flag. Oh, I knew something was off them, which is one of the many reasons why we need to learn to trust within how we feel around certain people. When we don't know, we just don't know and we don't understand. But when we do, we can start to tune into who we are as a person and not who they tell us to be as a person. With a narcissist lack of empathy to them, they are always right. They refuse to admit any wrongdoings unless by admitting a wrongdoing, they can escape any form of consequences. So this is when you'll get that false apology, if they can exploit you or escape consequences. They are not apologising because they feel bad for whatever they have done to you. They are apologising to protect themselves. Whatever a narcissist does, it is always about themselves. With their lack of empathy, they're very insensitive to other people's feelings, yet they are very sensitive to their own feelings. And because we can recognise this within ourselves and within other people, we don't want to hurt other people's feelings. We recognise that people can be sensitive, that people have emotions. We don't want to hurt those feelings within other people. However, a narcissist they are very sensitive to their own. They don't want to be criticised. They don't want to be judged. They don't want to be let down. They don't want to be hurt or abandoned. However, they don't mind doing it to other people because they lack the empathy to care for those other people. And with their lack of empathy, they can be extremely argumentative as they're trying to get their own point of view across. They're trying to get their own needs met and they're unwilling to listen to other people's points of view or take on board other people's points of view or feelings. Narcissists are very exploitative so they do lie an awful lot. They seek to punish those that the narcissist believes has gone against the narcissist. Punish those who think differently, talk differently, act differently to how the narcissist perceives other people should behave. They focus on other people's weaknesses to exploit those weaknesses in some way, to either make people feel guilty, make people feel ashamed, make people feel unworthy or to guilt trip people into the narcissist getting their own needs met and envy they they pull other people down to feel better about themselves they don't offer support they cause the chaos the drama and the conflict and then they blame you for the chaos the drama and the conflict they withhold attention affection and support so that you feel unworthy and then they breadcrumb you with those little glimpses of hope when they do support you in something so you cling on to that hope believing that they are a genuine person believing that they are the person they sold themselves to be and with all their blame shifting constantly questioning yourself more and more and questioning them less and less questioning them often leads us to walking on eggshells around them so the more they behave the way they do the more they get away with their behavior and the more we lose who we are as a person 
a narcissist is all about control. When it comes to questioning a narcissist, the best thing you can do is not leave them to it. If you really need to speak to them about something and you know they're going to go into one of their patterns of behaviour, know your reason why before you even enter the discussion. Know your reason why. Your aim isn't to make them see your point of view. Your aim isn't to find a mutual understanding or compromise with a narcissist. They're not interested in this. And if they suddenly do compromise, it's usually a false compromise and they will let you down. The best thing to do is retreat away from them, rethink, is it going to make a blind bit of difference if you try and explain yourself to them? Most often the answer is no and only respond if you absolutely have to do so. So if it's things like a court ordered childcare, things like this, where you have got to be amicable, where you have got to respond to them, respond once, state your point, stick to court orders, do not like, let them take you off topic. When it's a family occasion, if one of your parents is narcissistic and they start coming at you, stick to your point of view, state it once and leave them to it. The more you explain yourself to them, the more you defend yourself to them, the more they are going to push and poke away at you to get that reaction from you. So the best thing you can do is leave them to it. Know your reason why, stand in your truth. When it comes to having a discussion with a narcissist, the aim of the game is to come out unhurt, and come out knowing your worth, knowing your truth, knowing your reality. So recognise their pattern of behaviour, recognise why they do what they do. Don't get argumentative back. Feel pity for them that they can't understand where you're coming from, that they can't relate in the same level or on the same level as you can. Pity the fact that they'll never be able to have that mutual compromise, that mutual respect with another person and recognise what they are doing in that topic of conversation so that you don't get drawn into their toxicity. When having a conversation with a narcissist, which they often turn into an argument, they will gaslight you to distort your reality. They will project onto you, so they will pass all their feelings of shame or blame or guilt over to you. They will accuse you of being oversensitive when they're the one that's trying to protect the fact that they're feeling sensitive or they're the one that's trying to protect the fact that they've done something wrong. So they want to distract you by accusing you of being oversensitive or accusing you of overreacting or accusing you of being hung up on your past to distract you from the truth of the situation. They might start blame shifting to escape accountability for the things that they have done to you. They might offer that false apology, which is always just to escape any consequences for their actions. The false apology is often, I'm sorry you, I'm sorry but, I'm sorry if. A narcissist does not recognise their wrongdoings, they do not feel remorseful, therefore it's not a genuine apology from them. Genuine apologies come with changed behaviour. Yes, People can make mistakes, we can recognise that because we know we make mistakes. So we can explain to someone and if they take on board our point of view and if they learn from their mistake, all is good. If they repeat that mistake, this is a big sign that they feel entitled to do as they please and that they are not going to learn. They'll come at you with the word salad where they just completely throw random stuff at you to confuse you, deflecting the conversation onto something or triangulating, deflecting the conversation onto somebody else, what someone else said, what someone else thinks, what someone else feels, how someone else would behave. Lie, upon lie, upon lie, and they often tell that many lies, they end up believing their own lies. This is when you often end up there thinking, what, as they continue to spew out a lot of lies. Deny, 
they never said that, that never happened, they weren't there, you must be mistaken. And then if all else fails, it's those passive aggressive sulks and the silent treatments. So recognise the pattern of behaviour that they are shifting around so that you know what they're going to go into. Often they do follow that same pattern depending on the narcissist you're dealing with. So recognise the pattern so that you can know what they are doing. Sometimes it's not recommended because they do take offence to this and some can be dangerous. Sometimes you can point out what they're doing. You can say, well, that's a lie. Or why are you denying something? I have it written down over here. But as I say, this isn't wise with many narcissists because some can take it to the extremes. But with others, you can point it out to them. However, this, they're not going to understand it. This is when they're just going to fall silent on you because they fear exposure. So if you were to question them about a promise they failed to deliver on, they might come at you with, how dare you, after all I've done for you, to make you feel guilty. And this is when we have to recognise exactly what they have and haven't done for us and exactly what we have and haven't done for them. Is the relationship equal? Is it 50-50? Yes, sometimes it might be 90% one person, 10% the other person, depending who's going through what. But overall, is it even? Is it 50-50? Are they there for you as you are there for them? The why can you not leave me alone? You might have just asked them how their day was, but they feel entitled to just do whatever they please with no regard to you. The deal with it when they simply think that something is beneath them and you are the one that's just got to deal with the issue, you go and sort it out. They might have done some horrific things but to them you're the one that's got to deal with it because you're bringing it up so you're the one with the problem and they don't need to do anything about it, you need to go and deal with it. However, if they didn't cause the issue in the first place, you wouldn't need to deal with it. So the question more why they are unwilling to do this, why they are willing to do something in the first place and then why they are unwilling to help you through something rather than questioning who you are as a person. Because that's a narcissist's aim of the game is to get you to question yourself that much, to question your reality that much that they can remain in control. I don't want to argue with you is often a classic from a narcissist. It's not that they don't want to argue with you, it's they don't want to be exposed for the things that they have done to you or things that they haven't done or things that they've done to other people. So by saying I don't want to argue with you means they don't want to discuss their actions. And if you're going to continue the conversation, they're then going to blame you for the argument because they told you they didn't want to argue with you because they're not willing to have that healthy discussion. They're not willing to have that healthy debate. They're only willing to push and poke at you so that they can blame you so that they can excuse their own toxic behaviour. It's all about you. This is often when you'd like to do something for yourself for once or you'd like to go somewhere as a family, something along those lines which a narcissist doesn't want to do because with a narcissist to them it's all about them and if it doesn't match what they want to do they're going to project how they're feeling onto you and claim you're the one that's being selfish, you're the one that's being entitled when in reality you're just doing the things that you enjoy and they want to slowly cut you off from doing the activities you enjoy, to cut you off from your dreams, to isolate you from support so that you only have them to rely upon. Not my problem, which is the same as a deal with it. If a narcissist doesn't want to be held responsible for something, to them it's not their problem, it's something that is beneath them and someone else needs to sort out for them. The topics which when you're coming to something that's uncomfortable to the narcissist, they might randomly just come out with, oh I think we should have another baby, oh I've spotted this car I'd like to go and buy, how about another holiday? So they're going to give you that false hope and future fake to distract you from the present. However, 
you can't really call them out on it because that future thing they never deliver and if you bring up the past the last time they said this they're going to take deep criticism on this because they have a very good selective memory they're allowed to bring up the past of things you have or have not done things you have or have not said they can remember those things very very well however if you bring up something from their past they're going to accuse you of bringing up the past which is very confusing when you can't see what's happening but when you can recognize what they're doing you can recognize that they're not interested in understanding they are not interested in communicating and they're not interested in coming to any form of solution they're only interested in getting their own needs met and remaining in control and invalidating who you are as a person which is why you need to know your why and stay in your reality the triangulation when they say my ex would have never asked me about this your brother never would have done that your sister would never and again it's deflecting the blame onto you and a, almost accusing you of something that other people wouldn't do they might start interrupting you they might start talking over you they might start intimidating you all a power trip so that they can gain control of the situation not to resolve the situation to control the situation to the narcissist narrative of how they want the story to go they might demand it's over or simply say they're not interested and storm out on you they might call you names they might come at you with a good husband a good wife wouldn't act like this a good daughter a good son wouldn't act like this whatever a narcissist is doing it's so that they can escape the consequences for their behavior whether they recognize their behavior or not the fact remains they lack the empathy to care for how their behavior affects you as a person so when it comes to having a conversation with a narcissist the best thing is just to not bother because you are not going to get the answers you are not going to get the closure this is something we have to give to ourselves we have to recognize how we feel around that person we have to stand in our own truth we have to recognize our own worth and we have to start walking away from those who make us feel unworthy of them if anyone has any other manipulation methods that a narcissistic person uses within a topic of conversation or twists things into an argument please do add that into the comments to help other people recognize what they are or have been through my advice is always just don't enter that kind of conversation with a narcissist because they're not willing to help you recognize those who are there for you as you are for them and recognize those i shall add the video in the description of nine kinds of people that you should never trust and I shall also add the video in the description of how to avoid narcissistic people in the future. As it's not the most helpful advice, but the best advice is to just step away and no longer play. They are after your supply. They are after your reactions. They are after changing your reality on you to suit themselves. They are not after that mutual respect though they lack the morals to care for how their behavior affects you they lack the loyalty to other people they are only ever loyal to their own needs and they will do whatever they can to stay loyal to themselves i am full for one-to-one -one coaching i have partnered with better help i shall also add their sponsored link in the description and i do have a few online courses which is just a step-by-step -step guide to understand and overcoming narcissistic abuse. Thank you very much for listening and I hope everyone has an amazing day. Bye. Mm -hmm.